Hey guys, this is Rich from Rich TV Live, and we have some breaking news. Cureleaf Q3 revenue, wow, the Q3 revenue grows 289% to $21.4 million as company projects, are you ready for this? $400 million in revenue in 2019. Wow, that's right, $400 million in revenue in 2019. And let's just take a look at the price of Cura, okay? We will go to Trading View, and we click on Chart, and everything was down today in the cannabis sector. Let's see what Cura is trading at right now. Let's take a look at it. Cura Leaf, Cura Leaf. LDVTF in America. Currently trading at six dollars and thirty nine cents. It's one of the few companies that actually was in the green today. Look at this at six dollars and thirty nine cents. Hit a bottom at around four dollars and eighty four cents. Ever since its IPO here, you can see. Let's look at the three month chart. Yeah, you can see the lowest they've ever been is four dollars and eighty five cents. So that would be the low low, right here. That would be the low low, and it's currently at $6.39, so it's been climbing from the bottom, and it's been as high as $8.74. What do you think about this? If you like this, smash the like button, comment down below. This revenue is enormous. A projected $400 million in 2019 would make them number one. That's right. It would make them number one. Unbelievable. CureLeaf reports third quarter 2018 financials and operational results. Total revenue for Q3 and nine months 2018 increased 289% and 247% respectively. Total revenue for Q3 2018 increased 46% se sequently compared to Q2 2018 on a pro forma basis consolidated and nonprofit entities. Revenue for Q3 and nine months 2018 was 25 million and 55 million respectively. Successfully raised approximately 400 million in oversubscribed private placements. Wow. Ended Q3 2018 with 29 Cure Leaf retail locations on pace to have over 40 locations by end of 2018 and at least 67 locations by end of 2019. Cura Leaf Holdings Inc. C U R A on the CSE, a leading vertically integrated cannabis operator in the United States, today reported its unaudited financials and operating results for the third quarter and nine months ended September 30th, 2018, boasting the largest retail dispensary footprint under a single unified brand, with now 33 locations across 10 states. Cura Leaf has established itself as a leader in the burgeoning U.S. cannabis industry. The expansion of our retail footprint was one of several key factors that drove significant year-over-year -year quarterly revenue growth of 289%, a majority of which was attributable to organic growth. Joe Lusardi, Chief Executive Officer of Cureleaf, with the closing of our U.S. 400 million private placement and going public transaction in October, we strengthened both our balance sheet and ability to accelerate our growth objectives in 2019. With a strengthened balance sheet, we are actively seeking accredited acquisitions in several major markets across the United States, including Maryland, Massachusetts, Nevada, Florida, Arizona, and Connecticut. We are confident that strong organic growth combined with a sound merger and acquisition strategy will allow Cureleaf to establish the first national cannabis retail dispensary brand in the United States. Wow. Financial highlights for the third quarter ended September 30th, 2018. Total revenue was $21.4 million as increased of 289% compared to $5.5 million in Q3 2017. That is substantial. Total revenue increased 47% sequentially compared to 14.6 million in Q2 2018. On a pro forma basis, consolidated nonprofit entities, revenue for the third quarter was 25 million. Gross profit, excluding the impact of biological assets, 
was $13.8 million, an increase of 360% compared to $3 million in Q3 2017. Gross profit margin, excluding the impact of biological assets, was 64% compared to 55% in Q3 2017. Adjusted EBITDA loss was 5.5 million compared to a loss of 0.2 million in Q3 2017. Net loss was 33.7 million for the 2018 third quarter, including a 25 million one-time non-cash accounting entry as part of the RTO transaction and investment into new store openings and facilities compared to a net income of 0 0.5 in Q3 2017. So the majority of that 25 million was a one-time fee that they won't be having in the future. These are growing pains, people. Financial highlights for the nine months ended September 30th, 2018. Total revenue for the nine months ended September 30th, 2018 was 45.1 million, an increase of 247% compared to 13 million for the same period in 2017. On a pro forma basis, consolidated for nonprofit entities, revenue for the first nine months of 2018 was 55 million. Gross profit, excluding the impact of biological assets, assets was 25.9 million, an increase of 275%, compared to 6.9 million for the nine months ended September 30th, 2018. Gross profit margin, excluding the impact of biological assets, was 57% for the nine months ended September 30th, 2018, compared to 53% in the same period in the prior year. Adjusted EBITDA lost total 12.9 million for the nine months ended September 30th, 2018, compared to a loss of 3.5 million for the same period of 2017. Net loss was 40.8 million for the nine months ended September 30th, 2018, which included a 25 million one-time non-cash accounting entry as part of the RTO transaction and investments in new store openings and facilities compared to a net loss of 3.5 million for the same period of 2017. Year to year highlights, industry firsts. First cannabis company to achieve the safe quality food certification under the Global Food Safety Initiative. First cannabis company in New Jersey to formulate and sell vaporizer cartridges to patient, patients. First cannabis company in New York within 2017 license class to open a dispensary. Three dispensaries opened year to date. First cannabis company to open drive through dispensary on the East Coast. Wow, a drive through dispensary? I love it. Acquisition activity in April acquired Swell Pharmacy, a vertically integrated Arizona operator with four dispensaries. In October, acquired Midtown Roots, the only dispensary located in the heart of downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Retail footprint expansion. As of September 30th, 2018, the retail footprint of Cure Leaf branded dispensaries was 29 locations. As of November 26, 2018, there are a total of 33 locations, including new stores in North Miami, Tampa, and Tallahassee, Florida, and a new store in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Capital markets, financing, acti financing activities, and growth strategy. October 25, 2018, Cureleaf raised approximately $400 million in an oversubscribed private placement offering. Use of proceeds. Apply for and win new licenses leveraging management's expertise and tra track record of successfully doing so through competitive application process in strict regulatory environments. Enter new markets through accredited acquisitions have already committed approximately $83.5 million to fund acquisitions in Maryland, Massachusetts, Nevada, and Arizona with an additional $83 million for minority buyouts in Massachusetts, Florida, and Connecticut. Increase existing production capacity and new dispensary openings budgeting approximately $80 million to increase cultivation and processing capacity in existing licensed states to meet expected demand and to open new dispensaries to reach the maximum number of stores permitted under license currently held. Increase same store sales in existing dispensaries October 29, 2018, completed RTO and public listing 
on the Canadian Security Exchange under the symbol CURA. Financial results for third quarter ended September 30th, 2018. Total revenue for third quarter 2018 increased 289% to $21.4 million compared to $4.5 million in the third quarter of 2017. The increase was primarily attributed to growth in the company's retail and wholesale segment. Revenue for the third quarter of 2018 increased 47% compared to $14.6 million in the second quarter of 2018. Retail and wholesale revenue increased 472% to $16.6 million during the quarter compared to $2.9 million in the third quarter of 2017. This year-over-year -year growth is staggering. And if they can get a $400 million by next year, this is a grossly undervalued stock. This increase was primarily driven by increased sales attributed to new retail dispensaries in Florida, New York, and Massachusetts, and the acquisition of Swell in April of 2018. On a pro forma basis, including revenue generated by nonprofit entities, gross revenue for the third quarter was $25 million. Total gross profit, excluding the impact of biological assets for the third quarter of 2018, was $13.8 million, representing a gross margin of 64%, compared to gross profit of $3 million and a gross margin of 55% in the third quarter of 2017. As Cureleaf continues to grow its business and achieve scale, particularly in limited license markets, including Florida, New York, Maryland, and Massachusetts, the company expects its gross profits margin to expand meaningfully in 2019. Adjusted EBITDA loss was $5.5 million for the 2018 third quarter, compared to a loss of $0.2 million for the third quarter of 2017. Net loss for the third quarter of 2018 was $33.8 million, compared to net income of $0.5 million. So a lot of people are going to look at that number and they're probably going to say that they spent too much money, but this was for growth in the third quarter of 2017. The increase in net loss was primarily driven, right here, notice this line, by a $25 million one-time non-cash accounting entry as part of the RTO, the reverse takeover transaction, and investments in new stores, openings, and facilities. And if they grow to $400 million, no one's going to remember that. Financial results of the nine months ended September 30th, 2018. Total revenue for the nine months ended September 30th, 2018 increased 247% to $45.1 million compared to $13 million in the same period of 2017. Increased revenue are primarily attributed to growth of the company's retail and wholesale segment. Retail and wholesale revenue increased 463% to $33.8 million during the nine months ended September 30th, 2018, compared to $6 million in the same period of 2017. This is primarily driven by increased sales from the opening of new retail dispensary and production facilities. Total gross profit, excluding the impact of biological assets for the nine months ended September 30, 2018, was $25.9 million, representing a total gross margin of 57%, compared to gross profit of $6.9 million and a gross margin of 53% in the same period of 2017. Adjusted EBITDA loss was $12.9 million for the nine months ended September 30, 2018, due to forward spending on cultivation and manufacturing capacity. This is the first inning people, dispensary openings and increased marketing activities. Net loss for nine months ended September 30, 2018 was $40.8 million compared to a net loss of $3.5 million in the same period of 2017. The increase in net loss was again primarily driven by a one-time non-cash accounting entry as part of the RTO transaction and investments, including new store openings and facilities. Balance sheet and liquidity. As of September 30th, 2018, the company had $48 million of cash. On October 29th, 2018, the company received net pro proceeds of approximately $380 million the completion of its private placement offering. As of today, the company has approximately $320 million in cash after paying an aggregate of $65 million for the minority buyouts in Florida and Connecticut of $25 million and $40 million respectively. They're using their money to acquire their growth. I love this. 
As of October 25th, 2018, total common shares were 457,635,788, of which 335,465,083 are subordinated voting shares and 122,170,705 are multiple voting shares, fully diluted, and the company has 508,120,208 outstanding shares. Which, considering how much are held for voting, I think that they are pretty tightly held. Outlook for the full year 2018. For the full year 2019, Cureleaf estimates revenue of 400 million enterprise wide. Wow. Including revenue generated by nonprofits and free cash flow of 100 million. The company anticipates completing two acquisitions in the fourth quarter of 2018 in Maryland and Massachusetts at the end of 2018. Cureleaf anticipates at least 40 operational stores. The guidance for the fiscal 2019 are based on number of assumptions, including the successful execution and implementation of a business strategy that allows the company to increase its footprint to at least 67 retail stores by the end of 2019. That is huge. That's going to be 27 new stores on top of the 40 that they want by the end of this year. Increase same store sales at existing retail dispensaries. Expansion of current cultivation and manufacturing capacity. Receiving the appropriate regulatory approvals that allow the company to enter at least two additional states. Continued forward momentum of the regulatory landscape in the United States. The absence of a significant shift in economic conditions or material changes in the retail competitive environment. Wow. Consolidated financial statements and management discussion and analysis. The company's unaudited consolidated interim financial statements and accompanying notes as at and for the three and nine months ended September 30th, 2018 are available under the company's profile on CDAR. You can visit it at the company's website at ir.cureleaf.com. And there will be a conference call that is actually just ended today, just happened to go over the financials. Let's just read about Cureleaf Holdings. Cureleaf Holdings Inc. is a parent of Cureleaf Inc., a leading vertically integrated cannabis operator in the United States, headquartered in Wakefield, Massachusetts. Cureleaf Inc. has a presence in 12 states. Cureleaf Inc. operates 33 dispensaries, 12 cultivation sites, and 10 proce processing sites with a focus on highly populated limited license states, including Florida, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and New York. Cureleaf Inc. leverages its extensive research and development capabilities to distribute cannabis products in multiple formats with the highest standard for safety, effectiveness, consistent quality, and customer care. Cureleaf is committed to being the industry's leading resource in education and advancement through the research and advocacy. Cureleaf Inc.'s Florida operations were the first in the cannabis industry to receive the Safe Quality Food Certification under the Global Food Safety Initiative, setting a new standard of excellence. Let's just visit their website real quick. So, if you like this video, please smash the like button. Remember, if you're over 21, you can go to the website. And this is the website. And man, they're boasting some huge numbers. A 400 million revenue goal in 2019 is staggering. I love this company. I think they are grossly undervalued at these prices. And based on their revenue projections, this could be a 50 or $100 stock in the future. I'm just putting it out there. It's ridiculous. This company has so much potential located in America. I see this thing going way up. Okay, so at $6, I think that we could see at least a 100% increase from these levels in 2019 and maybe a lot more because their revenues and their earning potential is going to dwarf that of Canopy Growth, which we've seen go over $70 in Canada. So 
Anything is possible in this cannabis sector, okay? And Cure Leaf went up today and was in the green, even though they... Um, the entire cannabis sector was red today. So I believe that we will see green tomorrow based on this enormous news. However, they did show a loss. So the short, the shorters, the speculators, the institutions might want to focus on that. But I'm more focused on the revenue growth here. I'm more focused on the expansion. I'm more focused on the quality of the company. I love this company. I think they have huge potential. What do you think about this news? I think it's staggering news. And I think the future looks very bright for Cureleaf. What do you think? If you like it, smash the like button. Remember, Rich TV Live is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. Do your due diligence. Do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about here on Rich TV Live. Okay? I just got to put it out there. But I love this company. And I think long term, they're going to be a beast. Yes, I know the cannabis sector had a tough day today. But that's okay. We are here for the long haul. We have seen it grow for the last four years and we will continue to. The stocks will go up and down, but in the long run, we will be winners. What do you guys think? Holler at your boy, Rich TV Live. You can go and visit us at www.richtvlive.com. Follow us, see all the trending news, get all the top stock tools you need, cryptocurrencies, contact us. We are working with so many companies and you too can be featured on Rich TV Live. Holler at your boy, richtvlive at gmail.com. What do you think about Cureleaf LDVTF in America? What a weird symbol in America, LDVTF. And in Canada, under the symbol C-U-R-A, this is your boy Rich. Live life well with Cureleaf. What do you think? You like it? Do your due diligence. Do your research. Cure Leaf. I'm going to go learn a little bit more. I'm going to dig a little deeper. I don't own it yet, but if I buy it, I'll let you guys know. I might buy it tomorrow. I'm not kidding. I might just buy this tomorrow. All right. There's all the stock information. I'm going to do some more research. I'm out. Peace.